Good morning, PTN Ice Daily Show. Happy Monday morning. Sorry we are late. We can no longer uh, use Chrome for Facebook Live, so that was a nice surprise this morning. So here we are live on Facebook, on Firefox now, and down here on Instagram as well. My name is Alan. I'll be your host this morning. Uh, happy to serve as CEO of Ice and faculty member in our fitness athlete division here on Q&A Monday. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Today we're going to be talking about uh, some questions related to functional outcome measures, how to sequence and where those fall in in your initial evaluation in the use of some software called Photo, uh, which some of you may be familiar with, a lot of you may be familiar with, uh, at least uh, knowing about it, and kind of what is the research behind Photo, and where do we use Photo, and when do we use Photo. Before we get started, I uh, hope you caught our announcement Saturday night that we are going to be returning to live courses in a, a limited capacity beginning in June. So our first live course will be the first weekend of June in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's our lumbar spine management course with Jordan Berry. And then a couple weeks after that, we've got Jeff up in Danbury, Connecticut for lumbar spine management. And we have uh, total spine thrust manipulation out in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and then performing artist management with Jessica Davis down in Chicago, Illinois, all that same weekend, the last weekend of June. After the 4th of July weekend, we'll be really uh, ramping back up. We'll have a couple courses each weekend, hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, beginning uh, mid-July through the end of the year. Fall is going to look uh, really busy with rescheduling of a lot of courses, but we're excited to get back out in person to all of you. If uh, a live course is not in the cards for you right now, or we had to reschedule your live course, a bunch of online content, Persistent Pain Management with Justin Dunaway starts today. There's still time to jump in that course before the first meeting on Wednesday. And then pretty much all of our other online courses are beginning uh, either this week. We have Modern Management the Older Adult Essential Foundations online starting Wednesday, Advanced Concepts starting next Wednesday. We have Clinical Management Fitness Athlete Pregnancy and Postpartum starting next Monday. And then in June, we have Primary Care PT and Out of Network starting. And then we have a bunch of online mini courses and free resources on the resource tab at ptinice.com. We have our exercise physiology mini course. We have our clinical management fitness athlete exercise library, some free quarantine con ed lectures, a whole bunch of uh, workshops and ebooks. We just uh, were launching a new uh, ebook and video resource this week uh, on swimming. So look for that on Wednesday morning. And then hopefully by this time next week, we will have our next mini course, which will be on TMD management with Jordan Berry and Zach Morgan. That's going to be a fantastic course. Uh, that's really an area of practice that not a lot of PTs are comfortable with, um, that, that we can really grow our clinical practice in. And that course is super comprehensive, tons of videos down to teaching you how to, to market that skill set towards dentists in your area to really develop that clinical practice area. So that's all coming your way uh, or already available. So go to ptnice.com and check out those resources. So we had a really good question from Mike. Mike, I'm probably going to butcher your last name. Gilboy? Gilboy? Hmm. Uh, swing and a miss. We'll see. Mike. Mike said, when in the evaluation do functional outcomes or something like photo come into play? What does that sequencing look like? Sometimes I feel really pressed for time uh, in my evaluation, and I may not do photo at the start, I may do it at the end, I may do it the next visit, or I may skip it all together if I feel really pressed for time with the patient, and I want to get them in the door, I want to get them uh, an, a quality evaluation and get them started with some things to do at home to start getting better. So let's talk about photo. Let's rewind for those of you who may not know what photo is, photo is Focus on therapeutic outcomes. What is it? It's a computer-based system 
computer adaptive outcome measures. So things like the ODI, the OS Westry, the NDI, the Neck Disability Index, uh, the LEFS, the DASH, all those sort of things, those kind of paper handouts that we have patients fill out. It's put into a computer. We can put a whole bunch of stuff and sequence it together. We can say, I want a patient with back pain to maybe take the ODI, maybe take the lower extremity functional scale, and get a bunch of outcome measures strung together. What's cool is it's computer adapted. So much like a board exam, or certification test, it's going to learn as the person answers questions and kind of clear up some redundancies and, and really uh, speed up the time it takes that person to, to perform the outcome measures um, and skip a lot of questions. Like uh, on the lower extremity functional scale, for example, there's questions about walking, there's questions about running a short distance, uh, running a long distance, running on uneven terrain, running with cuts and sports and jumping. And uh, if you've ever given that to somebody in person in the clinic and they have so much pain they can't even walk, they kind of laugh when you ask them questions about walking and then go on to ask them questions also about running and jumping and cutting and bounding. Obviously, if, if they're having pain with just at rest or walking, those other questions usually don't apply. And the, the, the benefit of photo is that it's going to cut all those out based on how that person answers. Once they're done with those questions, it's going to stage that patient. It's going to do some data crunching, and it's going to offer things like uh, a, a measure of de uh, disability, some percentage of disability with our, our Patients that are using Medicare, we need to know that that G code uh, that's that's mandatory for billing. That kind of bracket of of disability based on those those outcome measures. It's also going to offer predicted progress based on other things they answer from a demographic point of view, based on uh, height and weight and BMI and age and comorbidity and all these other factors. It's going to crunch all that together with their answers and give them uh, a predicted progress based on everything this person is here and we can expect them compared to all the other folks who are very similar demographically we can expect them to make this much progress which can be helpful in goal setting something else photo does is compare the outcomes of patients that are seen by a pt it compares pt to pt and kind of uh, ranks PTs and ranks clinic groups as a whole. And this is very helpful for a lot of insurance companies uh, for things like merit-based uh, incentives. So that's a program through, through Medicare where based on a whole bunch of different stuff, outcomes, utilization, safety, patient satisfaction, um, you can either get deducted a, a certain percentage of your reimbursement or get a reimbursement bonus based on, on outcomes and photo is used to help justify that. So some clinics will offer bonuses to PTs based on where they fall on that photo benchmarking. So what's the research on photo and, and using functional outcome measures? There's a really good correlation between these kind of paper uh, questionnaire functional outcome measures and actual physical function as well as clinical progress. Uh, Julie Fritz and colleagues have a bunch of research on this um, that, that if we compare that to how people report um, their, their functional outcomes, their progress, um, what they're able to do before PT, what they're able to do during PT at a progress note, what they're able to do after PT, after having a bout of PT, we know it correlates very well to actual functional performance and overall clinical progress. Uh, what I like about some of these is it can really cue you into somebody's beliefs before you even get a chance to sit down and talk to them. So if on your photo or in your intake somewhere you have something um, like the, the Tampa Kinesiophobia Scale, um, you can really get cued in to what people think um, about themselves um, or, or how they perceive what's going on with, with their injury. Uh, for example, that that person who um, comes into the clinic, they walk into the clinic, but maybe on that functional outcome measure, they report that they can't do anything, you know, uh, crunching the numbers on that functional outcome measure like the Oswestry, they might show up as 100% as disabled. And so that, that can tell you how the evaluation is going to go and maybe guide you better about what questions you're going to ask, how deep you're going to dig into that symptom behavior model, the things that you're going to uh, ask. Um, when you get into the subjective history and maybe how hard you're going to push that person with your objective measures uh, when you're doing your, your initial evaluation. What are the cons of photo? 
Um, staging can place patients into a box, right? Um, if you're told that you are 100% disabled, if you are given a ranking like exceedingly limited progress expected, that can almost have a nocebo effect uh, on, on folks, especially if you have it set up to photo, maybe they're taking it uh, on a tablet um, and they can see that stuff. Maybe you have it set up as the, the PT view um, and you uh, have that shown and the patient can see it when they're done with that outcome measure. That can have a really huge nocebo effect, right? Uh, there's also a factor that we have to consider of, of literacy in and of itself, technological literacy. Sometimes in a clinic, f folks come in, they sit down, and they just get handed this tablet, and they're just tapping through all these questions. Uh, maybe they're given no no uh, guidance at all on these, and, and they're just told by the front desk staff to, to fill out all the stuff on this tablet. Uh, that can be kind of overwhelming. It can be fatiguing. It can be 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes of questions. I've certainly seen folks get bored with it and just stop doing it, uh, just start clicking through it, that sort of thing. Um, I've seen a, a giant inconsistency in its use, right? Um, I've seen folks who take it uh, and, and fill it out before their appointment begins um, in the waiting room. I've seen them filling it out during the eval while, while the PT is trying to also take subjective history. After the eval, multiple visits in, um, there's the question of, you know, how valid is it if somebody gets help and kind of coaching on answering the questions? Um, if the front desk staff is kind of walking uh, the person through the questions, if the PT is walking through, uh, the, walking the patient through on the questions, how does that change the validity? And then I've seen it straight up abused too, right? Where whether it's to save time or increase those benchmark scores, the front desk staff is just straight up answering the questions for the patient. The PT is answering the question for the patient before or after the evaluation. So there is that abuse factor. And obviously, you know, not every uh, clinic is, is abusing it like that, but when we see that it's an entire database of data, we need 100% clean data to actually be able to compare clinics to clinics. So when I see on a website, that a clinic is in the top 10% or the top 5% of photo. I take that with a grain of salt, knowing how I've seen photo used, its variance of use, the abuse of its use, um, and certainly setting applies, right? If you are working in a clinic, uh, an outpatient clinic, where you're working with maybe a lot of athletes, folks who come in and say, hey, I can't do muscle-ups because I have pain, I'm 100% disabled, and you're kind of laughing uh, because obviously, you know, to them, that's, that's a big issue. They're saying, I'm 100% disabled because I can't, I can't do the sport that I like um, versus working with patients with persistent pain who may have trouble just kind of moving around their house and also saying that they're 100% disabled. If you can get that, maybe that crossfitter back to doing muscle ups and they suddenly say after a couple weeks, I'm 0% disabled, I'm back to doing muscle ups, your outcome measure and your, your benchmarking on photo is going to look a lot different than that same person in an outpatient clinic uh, across town who's working with patients with persistent pain who may be hoping to get that person from 100% dis disability to you know 90 or 80%. Those benchmark scores are gonna look a, look a lot different those PTs are going to be compared a lot differently, uh, even though they're both working in an outpatient orthopedic setting, just just based on the patient population that they see. So we have to we have to consider that as well. What are the pros of photo? You can gather a lot of data really quickly, right? These are uh, stacks of paperwork uh, before photo that we used to have patients fill out. You know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten forms. Uh, it certainly speeds that process up. If you can get them to come early or even do it online, that's really going to speed up that process. And if you can see that information beforehand, it's very helpful. Like I, like I mentioned, you can start to know, hey, in this evaluation, I probably need to ask this person some questions about pain catastrophizing, kinesiophobia. Do you, are you afraid of bending over? Are you scared of bending over? Do you believe that bending over is bad for you? Start to ask questions about sleep and diet based on the stuff that they're filling out on photo. So it can really help your evaluation become more, more robust and you can take a deeper dive in that first visit than that you may be able to otherwise that might take you multiple visits to get cued in on that stuff. So it can really help not only make your evaluation better and more thorough, but speed you up down the road um, to 
to uh, save some time uh, where maybe you're not thinking, I need to look at this person's pain catastrophizing, or I might think that this patient is dealing with persistent pain on visit three or four, but now you're cued in on that visit one, and that's gonna speed up that, that patient's care and get them, get them more care faster, which is obviously much, much better for the patient. So how do we sequence this? Now that we know what photo is, what are the pros and cons? What is the research on functional outcome measures? How do we sequence this together? Whenever possible, have them complete it before the evaluation. Again, it's important to have access to, to those answers before the evaluation begins. Um, but there are some times where you get started with the patient and maybe you're gonna give a pain catastrophizing scale, maybe the, the Tampa uh, kinesiophobia scale, something like that, maybe a um, Pittsburgh sleep questionnaire. You're cued into something uh, that you did not get to with this paperwork beforehand that you get cued into during the evaluation. I don't think there's any issue with sending that home with that patient as kind of homework, right? Hey, take this form home, spend 20 minutes, kind of really thoroughly answer this, and then when you come back on your next visit, we're gonna talk about this, because I think this is very important to your care, and if you can spend the time to fill out this form, and you know, don't just check the boxes to get it done, really look at each question, read each question, and kind of dig deep on what your answers would be and come back with that. That has a lot of value as well, even if it's not done in the initial evaluation. But overall, I think getting started with the patient understanding their symptom behavior, being able to show them change, hey, we can change your symptoms, getting that buy-in, getting them to commit to a plan of care, and giving them some stuff to take home that's going to help their problem uh, between visits is infinitely more important than, than filling out those forms. Uh, they're mandatory for insurance, I get it, but it doesn't mean they have to be done that first day. Getting started with that person is way, way more important. I used to be, you know, by the book, all these forms have to be filled out. And what I found is there were some folks who showed up, whether it was a literacy issue or a time issue, you know, that person that's 10 minutes late and they got 20 minutes of paperwork to fill out. If you're by the book, you're only gonna get 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes of evaluation time with that patient. And that's just not enough time for a quality evaluation. So sometimes we have to push that paperwork aside and say, hey, you can take this home as homework. Uh, you can come before your visit next time. You can stay after this visit if you have time and fill this stuff out. It is important that we get it done, but it's not more important than getting you in here and, and figuring out what your problem is and, and how to solve it. So it is valuable to get it done as soon as possible, obviously. You know, if they're filling that stuff out on visit three or four after they've already had some treatment, that's going to affect their answers and obviously affect uh, their, their outcomes later down the road. But getting them in, getting them started is much, much more important. So that's kind of my, my thoughts on photo, what the research says on photo, the pros and cons, and then how that stuff gets, gets sequenced. Obviously getting it done as soon as possible is better, especially if you're gonna be looking at, at that again in a couple visits. Um, for those folks who have prior authorization with their insurance coverage, you need to be doing that stuff every couple visits to kind of ask for, for, for more time with that patient. So it's important we get it done. Uh, photo can be a, a good way to put it all together uh, in an in a easy to use manner for both the patient and you, but be aware of things like literacy, technological literacy, uh, not overloading folks with too many forms, only put on there what's relevant. Obviously, um, you might have a general low back uh, section template on photo, but you're not gonna put things about persistent pain and kinesiophobia and sleep on there uh, for a general template. Keep it simple and then add stuff on, maybe by paper, as needed. Don't overload that person. Again, that can kind of have a nocebo effect, right? If you have all that stuff on there and that person is reading it and they're getting told how disabled they are or that they should be afraid of bending over, that can ha have more harm than good uh, on the front end before you even get to work with that patient. So I hope that helps. Um, uh, it can be tricky, especially with benchmarking and getting getting bonused based on photo score. But overall, I think it's a positive system. I think we do need to use those functional outcome measures. Uh, for those of you working in, in insurance and taking insurance as your payment method, uh, you have to do some of this, especially if you're if you're working with patients with Medicare insurance. So getting comfortable with it is very very important. So that's all I've got for you. I hope we have a great Monday. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next week. Bye everybody.
Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.